brought to us by today's speaker. We invite, sure. Yes. We invite everyone to address our assembly with words of inspiration, lessons learned, or passionate ideas. And this little guy was practically dead looking when we walked in. Just a few minutes soaking in water, sapped him right up, although he hasn't opened his um, petals yet, leaves yet. That is an oxalis, the official shamrock. And no shamrock in Ireland has four leaves. They all have three leaves, in case you didn't know. Okay, every opinion here is strictly that of the person who gives it, right? So don't blame the church for that. Uh, let us consciously and lovingly agree to disagree if something does not resonate with us. So today we're talking about heart coherence. And a little bit about our speaker. Carrie is now an empty nester with her husband, Steve, and dog, Kaya. Currently, she is employed as a nanny while she finishes her Family Constellations Practitioner Apprenticeship, in which, by utilizing the quantum field, she combines her passion to assist people and pets in remedying themselves from within. She is certified also in, or she is certified in equine assisted learning and is perusing animal communication certification. Carrie leads the work weekly meditations at the Church of the Angels before the service. They're great to prepare you for the service. And she co-creates a bi-monthly silent forest bathing meditation with Edmund Green. So I very proudly uh, introduce you to one of our own, Miss Carrie Rudo. When I bought those shamrocks, they were they were very healthy. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd put them in the sun yesterday. <laughs> Guess they got a little too much. Oh well. Um, part of the reason I bought the shamrock is um, a few weeks ago, I realized that today was St. Patrick's Day. And I'm like, I think... I think someone else should speak today, not me. <laughs> I'm like, my family has this funny saying, like, we're a teeny tiny bit Scotch Irish. And then we looked it up and there's really like no such thing, apparently. So um, I don't know. There's something there. Um, but I, I really, I, I contacted Lydia and I was like, I really think, I, I really don't think I should be doing this. Um, it was kind of a feeble attempt to um, bow out and it didn't really work. And then two weeks, two weeks ago, I realized um, that I was at a, um, I will do this. Just give me a second. I knew what was coming and I had a huge why that fork in the road and I had a choice. I could cancel, I could reach out. We can find somebody within two weeks, that's plenty of time. And everybody would quote unquote understand. Or I could let go of my fear of not being good enough today my fear of losing it in front of everybody and let go of my attachments to what others may think of me. We have been so conditioned to think that crying is a weakness, 
and I have stood up here plenty of times with tears streaming down my face. And I realize I'm still resisting this. <laughs> and we've all probably heard what we resist persists. So I made that conscious choice to go ahead with today. And uh, sitting here last Sunday with Edmund's co-creating talk inspired me to write down a few things. And then Kelly said something about being uncomfortable equals growth. And so I wrote that all down. So thank you, Edmund. And thank you, Kelly, for that inspiration. And then uh, Friday night, I called her, I don't know, something with Lydia. And I was like, I can't do it. And she's like, you can do it. <laughs> so um, I'm going to draw something. Hoping you all can hear me and you can see this. Press harder. Can you see that? Yes. Okay, that's all that's important. <laughs> okay. What is it? Spiral. 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 Right. What do you notice about it? Upward. Going upward. What happens with the momentum as we go upward in a spiral? It gets bigger. It gets bigger? What else? Look. It reaches the heart. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the heart that's on the picture. <laughs> You're close. Keep going. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. What happens when we go around? We're up here, right? This is a level. How do we get up to this level? Go down first. Well, that's right. It goes down and it goes around. And right here, that's that why, that's that decision, that's that point. Are you going to level up? Or are you going to go, are you going to go down? Are you going to go back down here? That is that decision. That is the growth that we are all here for. We are here because we wanted to experience. We wanted to experience in conversations with God. If you've ever listened to parts of it, there's a whole chapter on why we're here um, to actually experience, to experience the pain to experience the growth, to experience the love, to experience the duality. That's why we're here. So when when we get to these really, really hard times, and they and then we go, why does this keep happening to me? Right? I've done this so many times because I went up. And each time, sometimes, not every time, but it, get, it seems like, like I've been doing this enough. It should get easier, right? One of you guys said it. It gets bigger. What if when we're at this point, we get excited? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, oh my God. I'm about to have a freaking I'm about to jump up. I have an option. And you know what? There's no judgment. If we decide, no, that's okay, not today, it's going to come back around. We're going to have another opportunity. It's going to keep coming. It's still, well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes I think, I think sometimes we do go back down here. I think that happens to me hopefully like two years ago. I think I did. I think I did make that choice, and I went. I, I can't do it, and I went back down. Yeah. But there's no, <coughs> there's no judgment. We are we are the biggest judgment of ourselves when we go when we cross over. There's no judgment. That that's, a, that's this human thing that we created here that God judges us. No, that's not that's not there. We're just here to we're just here to learn, <clears throat> or maybe not learn. I, I, I keep hearing that in this spiritual world, learn and lessons, and I, I really toss 
up with that because I also really think it's more experiencing. I don't know. Maybe if it's not a right or wrong, maybe it's just it's just for each of us to, to figure out. So that Y that I'm making an X, but I guess it's really you know why I don't know. Right? It just keeps happening and we just keep growing and growing and growing, and that's why we're here. So thank you for your support as I as I got through that. Um Yesterday, yesterday I was in a, um, a seminar with my coach that I've been coaching with for 10 years. And he said his favorite word in the English language is authentic. And I thought about that. Um, again, that expectation that we, you know, if someone is speaking that they have to be perfect what about just perfectly imperfect? What about perfectly authentic? And it's okay if, if we're imperfect. That's truly being authentic. If I were to just stand up here and put on that smile and just pretend and fake it till you make it, that's not being authentic and that's not really who I am. There's no coincidence that he said that yesterday. <laughs> I've never heard him say that in 10 years. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Art. Some of you may know this, but it's important. Uh, for the topic of today. Have you ever scrambled the words heart and come up with another word? Mm -hmm. e e -R -T. You got it. There's no coincidence. And that either. So heart equals earth. What is heart coherence? Heart equals earth. What is coherence? Well, Google says it's a systematic or logical connection or consistency. The term coherence implies, and this is from the HeartMath Institute, harmonious order, connectedness, stability, and efficient use of energy. What's an example? Consider nature as a living example of coherence. It's one reason I believe of many that our whole being balances and changes when we go within, when we are in nature. I just realized some of you don't even know why I was crying. <laughs> okay, so um, heart coherence. Um, there's been studies in the Heart Math Institute even did a study on equine heart coherence with humans. And um, my equine uh, soulmate, my Wally, I did we did, our family did usher him across the rainbow into the light on Wednesday. And, uh, you know, we, we, we cry because we're human, but we know that they're in the light. We know that they're celebrating on the other side. And I learned so much from this being. And I learned coherence and I learned heart coherence. And it naturally happened before I even knew what it was. We don't even have to know. We don't even have to have all of the, the data. I mean, it's nice for the scientific brains to have the data. And I, when I first thought about this topic, that was my intention. I was going to be, I was going to give you guys a bunch of data. I, that, that, that got changed. I'm not going to get a lot of data. Okay. So 
Um, just being in the presence of a loved pet of an animal, whether it's a horse or a cat or a dog or bird or iguana, I don't care. There, there is this coherence, there is this connection that happens. And the, the equine coherence is the one that I'm most familiar with, um, as well as dogs, but horses are like a thousand pounds and dogs are, you know, mostly 50 pounds, you know, average, whatever. Um, there's no science behind this, but I'm telling you, the horse, horse's heart is just like, it physically, it's bigger. <laughs> so their field is huge. It's huge. So just being within their presence, our hearts naturally connect and sync up. It's, it's amazing. Um, and that's where that um, equine assisted learning, that's why there's so many of these equine assisted learning and equine assisted psychotherapy programs that are coming about because they're, they're realizing this potential and how the horses just being within their physical presence can help us, our humans, go within and heal. They don't do the healing for us. That's a, that's a kind of a thing that we, we go to healers thinking that the healers do it for us. They're just providing the space, the container for us to do what our bodies already intrinsically know how to do. It's just been shut down. So they provide that space and that openness for us to be able to heal ourselves and heal from within. It's, it's quite beautiful. Um, in uh, 19, oh, just in the 1900s, 1990s, <laughs> 1900s, <laughs> the Heart Math Institute uh, researchers uh, identified a physical, physiological state called heart coherence a type of coherence that occurs when our body's systems, our breathing, our heart rhythms, brain rhythms, and hormonal response are in sync with each other. Isn't that incredible? Like who knew like all of that is happening when we do this heart coherence? I'm gonna say that again. Our body systems, our breathing, our heart rhythms, our brain rhythms, hormonal responses are all in sync with each other. Um, Dr. McCready um, also discovered that the heart coherence not only affects the physical process, but also our mental and emotional balance and composure. The research showed that heart coherence can be self-generated leading to less mental and emotional stress and more inner security and stability. So in summary, the heart coherence is a synchronized and empowering state physically, emotionally, mentally, spirit, and spiritually, allowing us to become our best selves. So they came up with this doohickey. Um, this is the older version. It's got the wire. They have a new Bluetooth one now. It's... Um, you plug it into your phone and it, it works with an app on your phone and it leads you into your own heart coherence and measures your heartbeats and shows your coherence when you're within coherence or without of coherence. What, what does that mean? What does that look like? So I wanna show you what the heartbeat looks like when it's out of coherence. And I'm not an artist. My my mom and my daughter skipped over me. <laughs> okay, so it's kind of like erratic. There's no pattern. Okay, it's all over the place, ups and downs, and it's just it's all over the place. With the heart coherence breathing, the technique, I'm focusing on the heart. All those body sy systems that I mentioned, they all they all become in, come in sync. And what is measured in this little, simple little thing, the heart goes like this. A, a, a pattern. It may have little things in it, but you can see, you literally can see 
on the graph the difference between being incoherent and not being coherent. It's amazing. It's really cool. So um, I'm not a, a certified practitioner through heart coherence, um, but I do practice it. And I actually often incorporate that into the meditations that we do. Um, and I, I don't sell any, I don't make any money or whatever. I just got an email that these thingies are on sale for, I don't know why, but they're on sale to like tomorrow, the 18th, I think. Um, so if this resonates with you or anyone, I, I can, you can just go to heartmath.com. I think it's .com or .org, I don't know. Um, it's a pretty, pretty good deal. Okay. Um, let's see. No, I'm going to do that last. Okay. Uh, one more thing. We're going to do the heart meditation, but before I do that, I wanted to share... Um, Wednesday was the, the day that we ushered Wally across the, the rainbow into the light. And um, I don't remember when it was. I'm going to say it was in January. I got a message um, from uh, Two Feathers. And uh, I looked it up and I it, there was something with horses and I, I couldn't quite connect connect the dots other than there's a um, Native American named Two Feathers that was trying to connect with me and about Wally, um, the, my horse. Oh, so I think you guys all got that by now. Okay. So um, my, we walk my dog Kaya in the park um, pretty regularly. And we have a couple um, places that we go, a couple different places that we go along the river. And uh, the one place that we normally like to park it's, there's only a couple parking spots and it was packed. And so we're like, oh, not going to park there. So we went, just went down the road and we're walking along the path. And my husband and my dog kind of looked down and these are laying right next to the path. I literally stopped in my tracks <laughs> and I picked them up and I was like, you've got to be amazing. <laughs> I mean, like, this is incredible. How, I mean, they're, they're, they're together. They, they, they were, they're together. The two feathers are together. I didn't put them together. They literally were right. I mean, like this, like I couldn't miss it. Like, I mean, so. Hmm? Coherence. Coherence. Yeah. Coherence. <laughs> so, um, that was, and it was the, like, the day of, the same day. Like, ah, again, no coincidences. It's just so cool. So, okay. So I know we already did a, a, a meditation, but I'm going to invite you to do, we're just going to do a, a short one, just so you can get a little, um, a, a little idea of the heart coherence. So go ahead and get yourself comfortable again. Relax your, your feet, relax your hands. Go ahead and close your eyes and begin to just breathe. Focus on your breath going in and out. And as you do this, focus your breath going in and out of your heart area. It's a little different. We're so used to going in and out of our nose or our mouth. Just focus the breath breath of life flowing in and flowing out. You may begin to breathe a little more deeply, a little more rhythmically. One suggestion is to breathe in for three seconds, hold, for three seconds, breathe out for three seconds and hold. As you continue to breathe in and out through your heart area, 
bring into your heart, into your mind, a feeling of love. Maybe a feeling of a loved one. Something that brings you joy. And bring that feeling directly into your heart. As you continue to breathe in and out. And feel the love flowing. And as we are all sinking in this heart coherence and this love, I'm going to read a little poem that I found when I was in Colorado at the John Denver Sanctuary. It's inscribed on one of the large stones there. Death is not an ending, but a symbol of movement along the path upon which we are all traveling as it may be painful to lose contact with the physical aspect of, one we, of the one we love, the spirit can never be lost. We have been and always will be a part of each other. The light in me honors and bows and is grateful to the light in you. And in that place, we are one. Namaste. Thank you. You can all come back now. That's it. That's a good statement. Does anyone have a question or a comment for Carrie? Yes, she will. Korea. Yeah. Um, when you were talking about the way the heart hurts, um, the bleeding way, this is what happens, right? Like, the way of the energy of the earth. The spiral? The, yeah. I'm sorry. It's not the other way. No, she's talking about the No, this is, this is the heart, the heart weight. Right? Oh, insight. Oh, yeah. Oh, gotcha. Light waves are the same. We are yeah. waves of light. And we are waves so of light. Right, right. Yeah. Anyone else? Yes. Um, Shannon. Carrie, I just want to say thank you for your speech. Um, can you hear me okay now? <laughs> I have to project. <laughs> um, it was very moving. I mean, definitely should be up there more. Thank you. Um, and um, <laughs> I, went, I went to early mass this morning, and on my way home, I um, spirit was like, you need to go. And I haven't been here in a while, and mm -hmm. um, I needed that today. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Oh, yeah. um, Carrie, thank you for being authentic. Thank you for being brave. Thank you for sharing your, your being with us all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your coherence. Yes, thank you. Yes, go ahead. I wanted to make a comment. Uh, different communications and styles and words are more or less effective for different people. Mm -hmm. And for me, something that always works, always leads to a connection, leads to me being open. I use the word humility. And mm -hmm. there may be two very wise people who I listen to, or maybe one of them just one of the strongest and most powerful personalities in the world. Somehow they kind of know it. There might be another person there who has humility and 
authenticity. And you know that they believe in it. And they may or may not understand everything. But that's okay. Mm -hmm. The person who says, I don't know if I can do it. The person who says, I don't know if I understand it. The person who says, I don't know if I'm good enough. That's the person who I'm drawn to. So when you have your moment of, I don't know if I'm there, um, that really works. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. David, and, and during that time period, there was a rush of energy from every single one of us <laughs> yeah. into you, which was beautiful. It was that beautiful. Was well. That's right. Yeah. And we need uh, the spirit downloaded something from Wally. We'll talk after. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for allowing me. Thank you. Problem for me with crying is not the crying part. It's the blowing my nose and blowing out. <laughs> <laughs> Coughing and everybody's so on my nose. Okay.